the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint. Neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faint and live that have no might. He will increase their strength. Even the youth shall faint and shall be weary, and young people shall utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Again, good morning. You are a part of the Whispering Word Ministry of the St. Paul Baptist Church. 1123 Center Street, Racine, Wisconsin. And I am Bishop Lawrence L. Kirby. And again, I want to greet you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And say how happy and delighted we are that you made choice of worshiping with us today, this Lord's Day. Again, let's rejoice and be glad in it. We'll be blessed through scripture and prayer by the deacons of the St. Paul Baptist Church. to steal, kill, and destroy. And I come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers and the hearers of his holy word. Amen. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us go to the Lord for a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come once again as long as we know how to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for one more day to be able to praise your holy name. Father God, we thank you most of all for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who hung his head, hung his head dead and died for us all. Calvary's Mountain. We thank you in the name of Jesus this morning for last night laying down, for this morning getting up. Lord, we thank you for starting us on our way. We go over our right mind for a beautiful portion of our sins. Father God, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for our church home, the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church. Lord, in every church over in your name, we got to give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory for our belongs to you. Thank you for our pastor this morning. For 39 years of love and leadership in this place, for 50 years of ministry, we thank you for Bishop Montel Kirby and the Father that you continue to strengthen in the body of God. Strengthen our first lady this morning, Heavenly Father. Strengthen with your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, for every one of us now in my voice this morning, Heavenly Father, we come and say thank you for your grace and your mercy in our lives. It has been sufficient in this morning. Say thank you this morning. Lord, before we ask for anything, we want to remember that you for everything in the name of Jesus. Ask me that you look in on the sick and shut in, Heavenly Father. Lift up in the name of Jesus. 
Southern Farm Baptist Church, and today we celebrate Father's Day. Yes, Father's Day 2020. We want to say Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers under the sound of our voice right now. And what a wonderful privilege and a great opportunity God has given us as fathers to be able to nurture our children and bring them up in their fear and have a mission of the Lord. And again, Happy Father's Day. The young people will come with some blessing, a wisdom, and wise and wonderful young people here in our church, and they're so gifted, and we want to just uh, join with them in leading us in worship and praise. Father's Day, so why don't we bless him for everything that he's done for us in our lives? 
in a season of pandemic and uh, we uh, are in a season where Corona is very much alive and I want to encourage us again as I always do to pay attention to the CDC and the medical professional and the scientists and please follow their guidance and direction. I am told that uh, COVID-19 is on the increase in about 20 states across our uh, country and uh, let's not take that for granted. Listen, wear your masks when you're in any public place and also practice social distancing. Will you please do that? Do that for yourselves, do that for your loved ones, your mothers, your fathers, your grandmothers, your grandfathers. Let's be our brothers and sisters keeper. Also, I want to just uh, uh, shout out this weekend. It's a Juneteenth weekend all across America, and, and we're going to celebrate the Emancipation Proclamation. And let's make it a real celebration, not just doing Juneteenth weekend, but let's celebrate um, at 365 days a year. And I want to encourage every one of us, no matter who we are, to be a part of the celebration. May the Lord bless you and keep you as our prayer. Again, I want to invite you to meet us at our website address, www.stpaulbaptistrecede.org. You know our Facebook page by now, St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church of Recede, Inc. Let me give a shout out and a word of thanks to all of the very faithful members of the St. Paul Church who have continued to support this ministry through the giving of their tithes and offerings. We believe that every believer ought to honor God with his or her uh, giving and ought to give that from the top and trust God to keep providing and making a way for us. And again, thank you so much for the very wonderful way you have continued to support the ministry of this church. We want to encourage everyone to support the ministry of the local church. If you be a supporter of this ministry, you can uh, go to St. Paul Baptist Church and there you'll see a picture of me, Bishop Kirby, and a picture of our church. You can go to the Giveify app and give in support of this ministry. Feel free every Sunday morning to drop off your tithes and offerings at our church. Uh, church leaders will be here to assist you as it relates to that. And of course, our mailing address. Our mailing address is St. Paul Baptist Church, 1120 Grand Avenue, Racine, Wisconsin, 534 0 our church phone number, 262-632-1467. I mean, again, that's 262-632-1467. Go on and push share and uh, share this word and uh, with worship with your Facebook friends. Also, I want to go on and push follow so you can be alerted each and every time that we come, amen, with a word and with worship. Be minded and reminded that every Wednesday you can find our Bible study on Facebook. Uh, there's every Wednesday we'll post a Bible study on Wednesday morning. And of course you can listen to it anytime you choose. Also I want to encourage us, I want to encourage us to be a part of the 2020 census. Uh, it is important for every one of us to be a part of the census because that will determine uh, the seats we'll have in the Senate and the House of Representatives, that will determine financial that will come to us for the next 10 years. It is important that every one of us be counted. I also need to say to you that we're still looking for census workers. Uh, those persons who are willing to want to be a part of the census workers, you can call the church office. I'll give you the number, 262-632-1467. Leave your name, your email, and your cell phone number. Those jobs are paying $21 an hour. Yes, $21 an hour. And if you're looking for some part-time employment uh, for this season, or you know someone who is, just please give us a call, amen, at our church office and take advantage of this opportunity to make $21 an hour. All right? Okay? Please pass the word along that everybody who needed, amen, might get it. Uh, in celebration of uh, Juneteenth Day, which is a holiday that started as a result of the Emancipation Proclamation, 
and those slaves uh, living down in Texas did not know it till the general from the Union Army got there and of course told them that they had been freed and it's time for them to be liberated. And in commemoration of that, we celebrate all over the USA again on Juneteenth Day. In commemoration of that, a part of our history and a part of our culture, I want to go way, 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 way back and sing a song that uh, um, maybe, maybe nobody know it much anyway, but this is the way the old church used to sing, and I kind of want to uh, uh, thank God for our musicians who can uh, catch any curve I throw, and uh, so uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to do this, if, if they can find me all right, uh, let me, let me, let me do this in commemoration of our culture and our history as Christians. Uh, yeah, in the church. Oh, Lord, have mercy.
Well, it's Father's Day, and I feel led of the Lord to uh, share a word for everybody, but particularly a word for fathers today. And the word of the Lord comes from a familiar passage uh, from the Gospel of Luke. We find it in the 15th chapter, and while the lesson starts with verse 11 and, and goes to the end of the chapter, which is verse 32, I will not take the time to read all of those verses, but I will just, so you know what the, the story is, I'll just read a couple of verses. Luke chapter number 15, and I encourage you to read the entire chapter, uh, chapter 15 of the Gospel of Luke, but I want to read just uh, two verses, verse 11 and verse 12, and I'm reading the New King James Bible. This is the word of the Lord. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided to them his livelihood. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord stands forever. I want to I wanna preach, teach, if you will, today from the subject a loving father. A loving father. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 15, is often called the chapter of lost things. There is in this chapter the lost sheep, there is in this chapter the lost coin. And the ears in this chapter, the lost son. And what I see in Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32, is what I call a loving father. I know we often call this text the parable of the prodigal son or the lost son, and that's all right. But today I want to emphasize the love that this father had for a son who had left home and gone to a foreign country. The love that this father had for a son that had caused him great disappointment. The love that this father had for a son who was beset with rebellion. And yet, in the face of all the Son does in the text, the Father still shows His love. Let me say to all of those of us who are parents that the greatest job God has given us in our lifetime is the job of being a parent. Whether we are mothers or fathers, the most awesome task that God has given each and every one of us is the opportunity of parenting. What God knows is this, if you are a parent, you have the opportunity to change generations. Can I say it again? If you are a parent, God has trusted you with the opportunity to change generations. What you put in your son or your daughter, they will pass on the hope to their son or their daughter if it's that which is good. And they will pass it on from generation to generation. We must understand that if God has allowed us to be fathers, we are no longer just concerned about ourselves. There is no time for a father to be selfish. I remember years ago, I'll talk about my family, I'll talk about yours. I remember years ago, my first cousin, one of my favorite first cousins, married a young man, and they had a, two sons, really. And the problem they had in marriage is that her husband acted like he was still a single man with no children. Whenever he would get money from his job, instead of him coming home and taking care of his home and his children, He'd go buy a pair of new tennis shoes. He'd spend up all the money, and if his wife asked him for some, 
It became angry and irate at her because he didn't seem to understand that once you are a parent, you can no longer be concerned primarily about yourself. If you are selfish and you want to always buy the newest thing that come out and, and the designer things that come out and you know you can't afford it, let me give you some advice. Don't get no children. Wait till you get ready to sell down. Wait until you're ready to stop putting yourself first. Because remember this, children don't ask to come here. And if you do whatever it is we do to get them, we ought to be ready to take care of them. I was talking to a young man not long ago, another young man, and I said, what you doing? He says, I'm stuck in the home with the children. I can't do nothing I want to do no more. Oh, come on now. You are not stuck at home with your children. You are staying at home with your children because you love them and you want to be a positive influence in their life. I'm going to say this again. If you have the mindset that I want to do what I want to do when I get ready, don't have no baby. Come on now. Don't get into children. If you are not ready to settle down and be a father, listen to me. And maybe I'll say this to the young ladies if y'all listening to what I'm saying. You ought to be doing what, what people do to get children. And you know the young man you're hanging out with is a boy and not ready to be a man. If you're hanging out with somebody and you know they selfish, you know all they want from you is just what they call a good time. Let me say to you, don't end up getting pregnant and having a baby. Because children need responsible, unselfish parents to bring them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Can I say another word to young people? Take your time and enjoy your teen years. You don't need to be settled down with two or three or four or five children that you're really not ready for. Can I say another word to young people? Take your time and lay a good foundation for the rest of your life. There's no need of added responsibility that you know you don't really want. <coughs> and you know you're not really ready for. Parenting is for adults. If you are not ready to be an adult, stop doing what we do to get children. Am I making myself clear? Maybe God wants to use some of us to break the cycle of poverty. Hmm. You ain't got no money, you ain't got no good job, you're not prepared for your future, and you start bringing children in here, and what they end up doing is repeating a vicious cycle of poverty. And God may be calling you to raise your children beyond any struggle that you may have had. Listen, parenting is for adults. Matter of fact, we look here in uh, the Gospel of Luke chapter number 15, we see a good example of a man who was ready to be a father. You know the story, if you don't, let me say it to you. There was a man, Jesus said, who had two sons. The younger of them came to him and said to him, give me my inheritance, I'm ready to go out on my own. The father gave it to him. He went out and foolishly, I said foolishly, wasted everything he had, partied. The Bible used the word riotous in it. And I know a lot of us don't know what that means today, but it really means just partying, just doing whatever you want to do, whatever feels good to you. He went out, and if he was in this day at this time, he would have been smoking weed every day, getting high morning, noon, and night. If he lived at this time, he'd no doubt be snorting a little cocaine and here, there, and yonder. He would go to the bar, and he would close the bar every night. He or she would feel like they got to leave the bar and go to the after set and go to the house party and all that kind of stuff. 
and wakes what they got on foolishness. I told a young man not long ago, you work hard, you got a hard job, you make good money, you get paid on Friday, and on Monday you broke. I said, and you're not taking care of his family either. And I said to him, man, you ain't working for yourself. You're working for the dope man. You're working for the liquor store. You're working for the pill man. When are you going to start working for your children and for yourself? Listen to me. If you are a responsible parent, work and make a way for your children. This young man took off and wasted everything his father gave him. And then found himself at a low place and said to himself, I'm going to rise, go to my father's. My father has plenty. And we read the story. Please read it. It says his father was looking for him. When the father saw him fall off, he ran to him, put his arm around him, and kissed him. Killed the thing he had, put a ring on his finger, put a rope around his body, and said, my son was dead, but now he's alive again. I see in Luke 15 a good picture of a loving father. What about you this Father's Day? Are you a loving father? Are you a loving parent? Let me summarize this uh, scripture from John, excuse me, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32, um, on three phrases, if you will. Uh, and I think these are three important things about being a parent or about being a father. First of all, we see the steps that a loving father is a father who is approachable. He is a father who is approachable. The text says in verse 11 and in verse 12 that the young man came to his father. It says in verse 18 and 19 and 20 and 21 that he said to himself, I want to go back to my father. I'm going to tell my father I've done wrong and I'm not even worthy to be called his son. The thing about this father is he had raised his children in such a way that he was close enough to them that they could come to him about any and everything. Yes? The good, the bad, and the ugly. Listen, if you're a parent, can I say this to you? Be such a loving person that when something goes on, or when something goes wrong in the life of your children, you are not the last to know it. Are you hearing me? You, everybody know what's going on in your child's life except you, because they don't feel like they can come to you and approach you and have a conversation with you. <coughs> Listen to me, brothers and sisters. A loving parent is approachable. His or her children know they can always come to mom. They can always come to daddy. And in order for that to happen, there are several things I think are necessary as I try to get to the second part of this message. You've got to be a provider for your family. You've got to be a provider for your family. You have got to be a provider. Go to work. If that job they out, get another. Get the job you can and get the job you really want. You must be a provider if you are a loving parent. Not only that, you are, must be a protector. It is your responsibility as a father to protect your family. Embrace them. Keep them from as much evil as you can in, in this world. And then not only that, but if you're going to be a loving father or parent that's approachable, you must be the priest of your household. Teach your children how to honor God. Teach your children how to love each other. Teach your children how to love God and love neighbor. Teach your children how to pray. Let them know they want to meet God in their life. If you would do that, sooner or later, your children will understand that mama loves me, daddy loves me, and whenever I have a problem, no matter what it is, I come to talk to them and I know they will give me the best advice and they will help me. Number two, that's a key to too long. Not only is a loving father one who is approachable, but a loving father or parent is that one of those who are associated with heaven. They are associated with heaven. First number 18, the young man said, I'm going to go back, I'm going to tell my father, I have sinned against him, and I have sinned against heaven. Listen, listen, who do your people, excuse me, who do your children think you are? What do they think about you? 
when we think about you? Do they think about someone that is kind and loving and gentle and supportive and peaceful and joyful? Or uh, when they think about you, when they think about someone who is associated with hell, rather than associated with heaven. When they think of you as a parent, when they think of someone who is mean and, and angry and negative and hostile and hellish, or when they think of you as a parent, do they say, when I think of mom, when I think of dad, I think of someone who is positive, who is prayerful, who is purposeful. I think of someone that loves me so much, that no matter what goes on in my life, I can come to them. Because when I think of them, I think of someone who is good and someone who is God? Hmm. Home should be your palace, really. When you want to get away from all the meanness and the cruelty and the evil in the world, you ought to be able to go to that place where Father is, where Mother is, and have comfort from being in the very presence of those who are associated with heaven. Let me say a third thing. A loving father is one who is approachable. A loving father or parent is one who is associated with heaven. A loving father or parent is also one who is affectionate. 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 The young man said to himself, I have wasted my living. And it's foolish for me to be down. And he said, yes, the young man went down. He went down to a far country. He went down into the pig's pen. He ate the husk that the pigs did not eat. He swallowed it down into his belly. He found himself down. But he said to himself, I still know and feel the love of my father. So he said to himself, I will arise and I will go back to my father. You know, all of us know what it's like to be wrong and to fail and make mistakes. I made my share of them. But there ought to be somebody in your life that loves you in spite of your failure, in spite of your shortage, in spite of your mistakes. That boy had such a person in his life, and that person was his parent, his father. And he says, I'm going to go to my father. And I'm going to say to my father, I'm not worthy to be called your son. You know what I believe? I believe his father had read Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Train up a child. Train up a child. Train up a child. And the way that they should go. And when they get old, they will not depart from it. I believe with all my heart that that parent, that father, had put the best he could, or the mother had put the best she could in that young man. And that's why he came to himself. Hmm. Read the text. Book. It says, when the young man who messed up terribly was on his way back home, his father looked at him and saw him. Our father, our, can I say this to you? Never give up hope on your children. Never stop looking for them to measure up to the good and the love and the godliness that you put in them. You know, the problem we have in America is we are too quick to give up on people. Even some of us give up on our children. I know, I know, I know. There is a degree of foolishness that usually go along with being young. You know, I was young and I was foolish and I made my mistakes. But can I say to the parents who are listening to me today, even the grandparent, never give up on your children. Now listen, I'm not saying give them everything you got, do everything they say, but love them and look for them to come back to the right teaching that you put He kept on looking at them. I don't know how many years it was, but, but this man kept hope alive. 
And he saw his son coming at And his son, before he got home, listen, the text said, the father ran out to meet him. When he got to him, he put his arms around him. And he kissed him. He said, my son was lost, but now he is found. Listen, listen, listen. You are to love your children, no matter what. And you are, you are to show affection to them, no matter what. Where, 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 where do we get this from? If you're a man, you can't show love and affection. Where did that come from? It didn't come from God. Because God is our Father. And look at how He loves us. And look at how He embraces us. Listen, learn how to embrace your children in love. Even when they have not measured up to your expectation. He hugged them. And he kissed them. Hmm. I grew up in a home where. I'm sure my mother and my father loved me because they provided for us, they protected us, they did the best they could for us. But they almost never used the word love. Matter of fact, I taught my family, my siblings, my parents, I taught all of them how to say to their loved ones, I love you. And I never got off the phone without saying to my dad or my mom, I love you. And they would in turn say, I love you too. Listen, what the world needs now is love. What the world needs now is love. Be affectionate. If, you, if you're not affectionate toward your children, they may be not looking for it in all the wrong places. Hmm. My son is almost as big as me. Big head guy. They say he looks just like me. I don't think he does with this thing. But he has no problem. I have no problem saying to him, son, I love you. He said, Dad, I love you. When you walk in the house, you see two big men hugging each other and squeezing on each other. Because I think, not that I know, that's the way it ought to be. What is missing in the life of so many people now is this. They don't feel love. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that just isn't enough of. And that love ought to start with the family. Call your children. Tell them you love them. Show them love. Show them affection. They need it. It's a part of how God made us. If we don't get it from the right place, we we'll look for it in the wrong place. A loving parent. A loving father. Approachable. Associated with love. And affectionate. Is that who you are? Amen. I want to pray for everyone under the sound of my voice right now. I want to pray for parents today. That you will give them strength and courage. Put love in their hearts just now before. Help us to be an example of love for our children. And yes, for our grandchildren. And for all those we come in contact with. I pray, Lord, for a new release, as it were, of love in this nation in which we live. There's too much hatred. There's too much evil. There's too much anger. There's too much resentment. And I pray they will shower love down on us. Put love in our hearts for our family. Love in our hearts for our friends. Love in our hearts for our family. We may be the people who want us to be. Stretch out your hand all over this nation and touch your people. I rebuke, I rebuke in the name of Jesus racism and anger 
violence and hostility. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And I pray that love may abide. Your love. In Jesus' name we pray. And we pray for even in your sin. And the church said, Amen. Amen. And amen. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And we don't believe in him. Let it not perish, for he had our last in us. I want to give you the opportunity today to respond to the love of God. He loved you so much that he sent his son to save you. Today, if you are not a believer, you're not a Christian, you're not giving your life to God, I invite you right now to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to spread his love abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. If you're not a Christian, if you're not a believer, pray this prayer with me very quickly with you. Father God, I repent of my sins. I invite the Lord Jesus Christ to come into my life and spread his love in my heart. I receive right now the free gift of salvation made possible through the blood of Jesus. I am saved because I receive salvation in Jesus Christ right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. If you pray that prayer with me, go out to your inboxes and let us know that you accepted the love of God in your life. Why don't you call to leave the information on our phone line? We'd we'll be glad to respond to you very quickly. And with this discipleship information to help you grow, you may be the person that God has called you to be in this day and this season. If we ever needed the Lord before, we most certainly need Him now. You need Him as a parent, particularly in the living and the living of this day of evil in which we live. You need God to guide you, direct you, and keep you. What the world needs, what you need, what I need more is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that just isn't enough of. If today you want to identify with the St. Paul Baptist Church as your church home, where you get the word in worship, you can also call it to let us know. Get boxes and let us know. We have to be a part of this ministry. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face smile on you. 